target for car thieves. Not talking Chevys and Jeeps, it's this device. Doesn't look like much, but more crooks. It's quickly becoming the key to getting behind the wheel of as many cars as you want. CBS 2 Suzanne Lemignol, live at Area 2 Police Headquarters, where a warning is going out tonight. Suzanne. Well, Brad, robbers are targeting locksmiths and their FOB programmers. Now, detectives right here at Area 2, they issued an alert about two different incidents. We learned about another incident that happened five days ago, this one in Bronzeville. He was scared. He was afraid, you know, uh, not knowing if you're going to live or die in a situation like that. Michael Payton talks about how a mobile locksmith was feeling after he was held at gunpoint near 38th and Wabash just five days ago. Peyton says the locksmith told him. Someone called that their keys were locked inside the car and then when he got there they uh, pulled out weapons and took whatever uh, property that, equipment that he had in the vehicle. The locksmith was robbed at gunpoint here in broad daylight at noon. The robbery is similar to two others involving mobile locksmiths. Police say in each case, the victims were responding to requests to reprogram vehicle keys. When they arrived, they were surrounded by two to four armed men. Then their vehicle reprogramming devices and key fobs were taken. Area 2 detectives put out this alert about two other incidents on October 4th and October 25th, both happening during the day. An employee here at Curtis Key and Lock Service in Grand Crossing showed us how the key programmer works. We won't show you specifics, but it's not difficult to make a new key fob. The keys that are in front there in that fob, you could reprogram that with this in minutes. Correct, yes. Now, the owner of Curtis Key and Lock Service told me for safety reasons, they always have cars towed to their business to make new fobs. At Area 2 in Pullman, Suzanne Lemigno, CBS 2. This is why an aftermarket alarm is a must. Factory alarms will not save. It is simple as that. Close to the car and unlock the car when the driver pulls on the door handle or touches a sensor on it. You can also start the car without a key. The key emits a code or a series of codes which are picked up by the antennae in the car's bodywork. However, this code sent from the key fob can also be grabbed by a scanning device. This is then sent to a booster unit that repeats the same code next to the car door to open it. If the car can be started without a key, this same booster can also be used while pressing the start button to fire up the engine and drive the car away. This is often referred to as a relay attack. In general, keyless entry fobs have a range of 5 to 6 meters, so one of the scanning units has to be no farther than this from the fob. The distance between the two scanners can be up to 50 meters though, so don't think that your car is safe just because the keys are a fair distance from it. If a thief can get close to the fob, the car is vulnerable of the day. But Busy Chicago street and two thieves get away with a locked car. CBS 2 investigator Megan Hickey live in Fulton Market where she's learned they may have hacked their way in. Megan. Brad, surveillance video shows there was no broken glass or lock picking required to steal the car and residents worry it was a much more high tech heist. This was their second pass. Today we went back to the scene and traced the suspect's footsteps. 
Surveillance cameras captured two men in black hoodies walking up and down the block on Thursday. Take a look. They walk past this Volkswagen Golf sedan parked along the curb. They make a loop. They walk past it a second time, and just like that, they open the car door, hop in, and drive away. They didn't check the handle of the vehicle before they stole it. That's the weird thing. The car was locked, and the owner was in a nearby business with the key fob in her pocket. It just looked like there was some kind of electronic entry. The Fulton Market Association's executive director told me he's releasing the surveillance video and screenshots of the suspect's faces in an effort to raise awareness in this neighborhood. We've had some cars stolen from valets right off of the valet line, but we've never had this kind of electronic break-in into a vehicle and an automatic theft. Today, Chicago police confirmed the theft report but couldn't comment on how the car was stolen. Tony Dolan, who owns a local locksmith company and serves as the director of security for an IT company, is aware of one possibility. There is products that you can purchase online from overseas that can capture those frequencies that are being transmitted from the vehicle to the car. Cloning the signal needed to open the car, he explained, with the push of a button. In a 2016 study, researchers at the University of Birmingham said tens of millions of cars are vulnerable to this kind of keyless hacking. They include many Volkswagen models, as well as some Ford, Mitsubishi, Nissan, and others. Dallin says many of these companies are actively working on thwarting these kinds of hacks, but in the meantime... There's very little that we can do right now other than, you know, park in populated areas, you know, have situa situational awareness. If you see something, take note. Now, the Fulton Market Association tells us that Volkswagen was recovered over the weekend, but at last check, no one had been charged. Anyone with information is asked to contact Chicago Police. Live in Fulton Market, Megan Hickey. Hey, everybody. This is SNA Security Specialist in River Grove. Uh, we're going to show you a demonstration of our ultimate alarm package. So we're pretty much going to turn on the alarm from the cell phone. There you go. The alarm is on. Now, the way that we configure things here at SNA, we do not use the factory key fob to arm and disarm the new alarm. We do not want that. Okay? So, for an example, if I were to press unlock on it, you'll see the doors will unlock. But once we get up to the car, cannot start the vehicle. The alarm will still keep going off. Now, if for some mysterious reason, a thief was able to get your alarm to turn off, okay, you'll be able to turn on the ignition, right? Well, with our pin code system in, you step on the brake, the vehicle still will not start. So we have two layers of protection on this vehicle. We have the alarm remote start with drone system, you cannot start the vehicle once the alarm is turned on from your phone. And if it gets bypassed somehow, which we highly doubt, the second layer is the pin code, which is what it's doing now. It will not let the car start, okay, until you put in your code. Now, we're going to reveal our temporary code, which we always use the OK button four times. Four presses of it and two flashes of the hazard lights is your indication you put the correct code. Now you can start the vehicle. That is the only way you can get this vehicle started. Once the vehicle is turned off, it only takes three seconds. Now you can step on the brake again. And there we go, there's the brake, there's the button. Will not start again. So, even if you forgot to turn on your CompuStar alarm system, pin code is still stopping the vehicle from starting. Will not start. Now, we also make it so you can remotely start your vehicle from the new drone. Now all you have to do is walk up to the vehicle, unlock the doors, get in, Step on the brake and you're ready to drive away. Except our pin code system 
is locking the gear shifter. You cannot shift the vehicle. So, there is the brake. There is the button. You cannot shift it. You gotta enter the code. Wait for the two hazard light flashes. Now I am able to step on the brake again and shift it. And then once the vehicle is turned off, you can now be rest assured this vehicle will not get stolen. So here's the brake. There's the button. There you go. For more information on the ultimate alarm system, give us a call. 773-772-5424. We are by appointment only. Thank you. What are you fucking nuts?